Coming in. Coming in. You know what that means? It's Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. That means it's What's the Story with Maria? How you doing, guys? So I am Maria. I am your host. And let's see, immediately people Richard pop Skipper. on. Yes, <laughs> Richard Skipper, you won. You were first in today. Ed Kutu <clears throat> from Blade Salon in uh, Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Hi, Eddie. Leo Rorigas has joined us. <laughs> Leo, I was telling them about you. Is he a boxer? No, a boxer. but he does sound like a boxer, yeah, right? Yeah. No, he is uh, the accidental intern that I told you. He's a oh, singer and a, okay. uh, he's a playwright, all kinds of things. Rena Cunyali Berge, she's my cousin in Massachusetts. Oh. Hi, Richard is saying oh, yay. Yes. So um, anyway, I told these guys all about my regulars. And they pop on right away. George Fernandez is now coming from Miami. Hi, George. He's an incredible artist, visual artist that also happens to be a doctor of psychology. Look at that. Richard Maria and the Pips. See? I, <laughs> what did I say? Cute guys with you. Richard, I told them. I said someone is going to say they're cute because they are adorable. Oh, come on now. I know. <clears throat> I'm telling you. All right. So where? who are we and where are we here? This is going live on Armed Radio. If you're listening to us on the radio, hi, Richard Brooks. If you're listening to us on the radio, this was started, Armed Radio was started for the Armed Forces, and we salute our troops. We thank you for your mm -hmm. service, and we appreciate you, and I hope you like the show. So we are coming live from New York City, and uh, you can listen to us live on armeddigitalmedia.com, armedradioglobal.com, and of course, we also Facebook Live it. So if you are just listening on the radio and you hear me yell out all these names, what's happening is our friends are popping on. Michael Vaccaro has popped on. Uh, he's in L.A. George, I mean, Hector Garcia is out in Miami. So hi, guys. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm not losing my mind. I'm just <laughs> calling out people, and that's what happens. Okay, so we are going to forge ahead. We got enough people now that are listening and have popped on, and more people will pop on. So if I stop and acknowledge, that's what's happening. So again, my name is Maria Gentili. I am your host. I'm happy to be here. And I want to tell you, tonight's show, you know, I always uh, have a reason for putting people together. Johnny Tamara and I have been chatting uh, off and on. Is that Kenny Green? Let me see. No, Kimberly. Hold on. No, Kenny Green. No, Kenny Green. Is it Kenny Green? Hey, Kenny. Oh, boy. Do you know, you know Kenny? Of course. Of course. Oh, my God. Kenny's a musical director downtown, and he does a lot of tours. Kenny, you're going to particularly like this show because we talk about touring a lot and a show business and all that stuff. So I put these two guys together. Johnny, um, I've known through the Tony and Tina family, and um, he is an actor. And, and David, I just recently met David Foley. He's a, they're both singers and actors. But why I put them together tonight and what I absolutely love about them is that they're dads and they are very proud of being dads. So um, I'm calling this show the beautiful balance of showbiz dads because when we were talking earlier and I said, What's, what is that like? That's what they both said. It's just, it's, what did you say? Wacky and it's beautiful. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing and cuckoo at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> That's about right. So, okay, so we're going to start with, um, let me see, I got a few more people coming on. Jeannie Craigie in Massachusetts. Hi, Jeannie, how are you? Um, she comes on every week. This, these are our regulars. All right, so uh, let's start with Johnny, because uh, you got, and then we'll we're gonna go back and forth. Mm -hmm. All right, so Johnny, you started off at Tony and Tina's wedding. That's how we know each other yes. as an actor. Mm -hmm. And I yesterday I called Lynn Portis, who's our mutual friend and musical director, and I said um, I was mentioning your name, and she said, "Oh, Johnny Tamaro. He brought a whole different level to Donny Jolti, which was a character you played, who's the singer." He's the wedding singer in the show. He's one of the only singers in the show. Yeah. Besides yeah. the uh, Lynn, who's the musical director, right? And so you're with the band. You're part of the band, but you're also an actor. So you do both those things. And that's what she said. She said he brought it to a whole different level. She said he's the real deal. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And coming from her, because she, she's the real deal, I thought that was really, really great. And David and I worked. I met David because we worked together at Brandy's a few weeks ago, which we both love. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there's so many great singers in this town. So you, when you work with someone, you're like, oh, this guy's going to be good. And then I heard your pipes. I was like, what the hell? He, <laughs> I would put you under quintessential Irish tenor. Oh, Is thank that you. Correct? Mm. I take that as a compliment. Oh, yeah, my thank you. God. Like, I, I, that's before I knew your last name. So it wasn't <laughs> that I just, I was like, now that is a legit Irish tenor. 
right? Would you put yourself sure. there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you're both consider yourself singers? Oh, I'm not sure. Like first or actor? First? No, not anymore. No, I would say I would call myself an actor before a singer. But yeah? I, yeah. Yeah, me too. You too? Yeah. But, yeah okay, yeah. and you were both, before we started, we were talking shop, you and you were talking acting. So John Pandish has joined us. Michael Andrew Rubenstein has joined us. Uh, who, I missed, I, if I missed anybody, just pop back on. I don't on. think you did. I don't think you did. Okay, I like, to, I like to acknowledge our people. Amazing and Cougar. Yeah, those are such... Dad words, you're right, Leo. Mark Aaron James has called us. Thanks, Leo. Yeah, yeah. oh, Leo, you were lovely. Leo's the best. All right, so where do we want to start? I I would like you guys to tell people what you're doing soon because you are you have a big thing coming up. You have a big thing coming up. So, David, why don't you tell people what you're, you're going to – because I when I booked you, you said I originally wrote Thursday the 19th, and then you tucked text back and said if it was Tuesday. Ooh, yeah, I said, oh, I don't know if I can do Thursday. Um, because I'm jumping back into Phantom of the Opera, which is uh, the show that I've been doing sort of off and on for the last four and a half-ish, five years now, um, on the road, touring. Um, so, uh, that's a, yeah, that's so a tough show vocally, that. too, isn't it? It's a big show vocally, yeah. You do um, seven shows a week or eight? We do eight, eight. We do eight wow. every week. Uh, and on a travel day, those uh, travel week, I should say, those eight shows are crammed into like five days. So uh, so wow. it's 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 a big it's a big commitment saying yeah so you do what two on wednesday two on si tell me tell if me it's a schedule. travel week we'll do yeah we'll do a show wednesday night two on thursday one on friday then two saturday two sunday whoa yeah that's, yeah, it's, a, that's it's, it's a lot a, and then it's spread out a little bit more the second week of a, yeah of a city but uh okay and so uh where were some of the cities that that you're coming to that we can look for you so this week i will be in providence rhode island so all those massachusetts people yes, out I'm there telling you, that's i hope why. uh maybe a couple of you get over to uh to providence to see phantom of the opera um, okay the spectacular new production all right so this is a brand new production it was brand new four and a half years ago oh okay <laughs> good no but that's it's not like a a thirty no, year version. It's not the thirty year version. They they souped up a lot of the special effects. Oh, wow. Um yeah, oh, the cool. chandelier's been completely reworked. Uh I don't want to give away any 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 no, surprises, but um but the direction um has, has had a whole, you know, sort of fresh fresh look at it, fresh look at the show. And th is there anything particular that you do? Do you, are you an understudy? Are you uh, do you have a main role? Do you do lots of different things? What well, every night I play the role of Monsieur Ray, who, if you don't know the show well, you probably don't know who he is. But he's the opera director. Oh, uh, so he's okay. the sort of uptight um, uh, guy who, sure. who, who runs the who runs the show and tries to get everybody to learn their lines. Oh, the sure, of course. Them for not knowing them. That's you. That's me. And then I understudy the managers. Oh, okay. Because I know that in most companies, especially on tour, you're going to understudy at least one other. Yeah. That's yeah. usually the way it goes. Okay. So a look for. David Foley Jr., if you are, a, if the tour of Phantom comes around. Yeah. That is great. And how long will you be out for? Oh, the foreseeable future. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to come back to you because then we want to talk about the whole, how it yeah. works into family yeah. life. But this is exciting. Cool. I'm very excited for you. Okay, and Johnny tomorrow, mm. tell us what you're doing. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, uh, since 2011, we've been working on a musical about Dion DiMucci, uh, Dion of the Belmonts. And yesterday, there was the announcement that Paper Mill Playhouse is uh, going to premiere it in its 1920 season, and it'll be at Paper Mill Playhouse May 28th to June 28th of 2020. Okay, hold hold that thought because a bunch of people have come on, and some of them are Jersey people. Maria Filiomeni, how are you, my love? And um, she's she's a Jersey girl. We got Margaret Curry has come on, Paula West, Kia Nelson, she's in Philly, and then we got um, Mary Raritan, and she's in Massachusetts. So Mary, we're just talking about the Providence. You go back and see the show. David's going out with a uh, Phantom of the Opera. It's going to be in Providence. Johnny is. Um, in a new show, you, some of these people just came on, a new show. And what is the name of the show? I know it's about Dion and the Belmonts. The name of the show is The Wanderer. I love it. The story of uh, the musical, the music and story of Dion. So I was involved with it since the beginning, 2011. And then nothing happened for five years. And then 2016, we did a reading. And then 2017, we did another reading. In 2018, we did another reading. And then we did the workshop in September. Wow. And I was in every sing single one of those. Oh, my God. And now, you know how this business works. Yes. Sure. Who knows? I but, know. you know, I'm very hopeful and fingers crossed that uh, 
by uh, next March or April, we'll be rehearsing and we'll be in. Um, uh, my uh, your aunt is saying David <laughs> is, is my aunt. aunt. She's saying David is my nephew. And, She's so uh, proud. Yeah, and we, uh, yeah, so uh, I met with the producer last night and he's all excited and everybody's excited. So, uh, wow, this is really, yeah. and uh, I mean, as an Italian growing up, Dion and the Belmonts were sure. huge. And he's amazing. How about you guys? Oh, he's yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. yeah? He's, great. he's the coolest guy you're ever going to So meet. you met him? He's amazing. Oh, he's great. He's so involved in it. He's really? at every rehearsal and, and wow. he is, is the man. man. He's great. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah. And who do you play, Johnny? I play his dad, uh, Pat DiMucci, Pasquale DiMucci. We call him Pat. That was my dad's name. Oh, well, really? His name is Ricardo Pasquale, but some of the Italians called him Pasquale. Wow. And then uh, uh, the hairdressers called him Ricardo. So right, right, okay. we call him Ricardo, my sister and I. Especially That's awesome. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So, and, yeah, and then, you know, Dion And what's said, the character like? Well, Dion told me that uh, his father was very... Hi, Donna. Policetti. Who's Donna <laughs> That's Policetti? a very good friend of mine from Community Theater from 1989 yeah, I love to like it. 1997. She directed me in Into the Woods wow. in 1993. Oh. I was Rapunzel's Prince. How yes. cool. That was great. She lives in, where are you living? Where are you now? Middletown? New York, I think. Type right? it in, Donna. I think type Middletown, it in. Middletown. This is so exciting. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, that's your aunt. Where's your aunt, David? <laughs> uh, she's in Massachusetts. Really? Yep. Yep. Wow, I'm from Massachusetts, and how cool. This is so great. Cool. All these great people come on. Awesome. Brian Johnson, he's in Massachusetts. He's just yeah. joined us. Um, okay, so when 2020. 2020, yeah. March, May, 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 May 28th, which is weird because my father passed when I was 19. Um, 20, what's, what's today? 29 years ago. August 18th will be 29 years ago. But his birthday is May 28th, and the first preview show falls on his Wow, wow I just got chills. Freaky. And we're Freaky. talking about dads tonight. Yeah, yeah. This is crazy. You yeah. see how this works out? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. And I his father, it. Dion told me about his father. He said his father had great qualities, but he didn't like to work. And um, the, the play is about uh, his family and his, his rise to stardom from the age of 17, and it's, uh, it's a fantastic... Uh, I can't wait. It's it's I've been great. hearing things about it for a while now, but I cannot wait. Sal so, so says hi to him. Who said? That's Donna's husband. They were middle town. I was right. Oh, cool. Hi, Sal. All right. Hi, Sal. And Melissa Driscoll's joined us. That's a friend hey. of mine. She's a yep. sweetheart. She's from Ohio, but she lives here now. Mm -hmm. So uh, also an actress and a singer. Um, okay, so these are great things that are up and coming. Now, these workshops, they take forever, right? Oh, my gosh. It's crazy. David, have you ever done a workshop of anything like uh, that? I've, I've done a few over the years. Yep, so, nothing that's ever... I mean, because yeah, that's, that's the thing, too. The they take with, so long that sometimes they peter out and run out of steam. Or and, the, the original actors don't end up in mm -hmm. the final productions because they either age out or right, they, right. they have other... They're doing other things. They're on to other... Um, yeah, you know other shows and things of that nature. So you never know. Isabella Raskowski is really my cousin Marisa. She she's, ah. she goes under her daughter's Facebook page. She's incognito. <laughs> you won't tell anybody. This is very exciting, Marisa. Thank you. Yes, she loves Phantom. It's going to be cool. And uh, she's in Massachusetts, in Rhode Island, in Providence. Mm -hmm. Um, and she loves Dion. So I'm well, telling you, you know, Marisa. When I think of Dion, I think of our uncle Nicky, who is um, Marisa's dad and my, which actually. I should show you a picture. My uncle Johnny was Maurice's dad. They were like Dion and the Belmonts. These guys. I mean, they <laughs> they were musicians and they they were dancers and they had that slick back, beautiful hair and that. You know. Can I say how excited I am to have this sign behind my head live <laughs> in the living room? Uh, yeah. Well, because I watch you all the time. This is freaking great. I love it. I have the lights behind me. I'm, I'm like, telling so, you, I'm, I'm on like cloud eighty seven right now. I love so it. Great. Well, I am so happy that you both here and I. Johnny comes on all the time on the show. So you guys may see him from, uh, actually, Johnny, do me a yes. favor. Right behind you, you see this black and white picture? I want you to grab it. This one? Yeah. Wow. Bring, it, bring it over here. Because Marisa, That's this is Marisa's awesome. dad. Look We're talking that. about Dion. Look at that guy. So there's Marisa's dad and mom. And they used to go to all the dances, um, you know, like in the 60s and 70s and the late 50s. So this is exactly that, that era of Dion and the Belmonts. These were the people that went to these dances and listened. So th all this stuff that we're talking about tonight. That actually reminds me of Dion and his wife, Susan. Yeah. You know, they'll be married wow. 56 mm -hmm. years in oh, March. Oh, my God. Well, this, this month. Oh, Isn't God that bless. something? 55, wow. So, something you dead. know, just these amazing, right, Marisa? We used to, these were, they were like, we thought they were the Rat Pack. You know, <laughs> our parents were like so cool, you know. 
Um, so anyways, just, just so many cool things that happen. Now, uh, Leo is saying, Mark, your high power. What is this, Mark, for you? I don't know. Oh, they're talking to each other. Sometimes they talk to each other. John Savino. Hi, John. That's my cousin, John. John, look who I'm just showing. He's my cousin, John. That's his grandpa. So cool. Oh, wow. A lot of great things are, are coming on. All right. So now um, I want to talk about, we, you both have been actors for quite a while, right? Right. Because when you were when you guys were talking before the show, you actually knew some of the same people and mm -hmm. you knew a lot about the same theaters and things like that. Did you start off as actors or singers? You go ahead, Dave. You go first. Uh, I, I mean, if we're talking about really starting off, like we take it all the way back. Yeah, I was a singer yeah, all the way I back. Sang yeah. in choirs and I sang at church. Sure, that's sort yeah. of where I Me too. figured out that I I could do this. But if, How, did somebody hear your voice and say, "Young man, you have a voice," or did you? Did you let people know you had a voice? Because it can work either way. Sometimes I, people are. I well, certainly my mom thought I could say okay. <laughs> before I knew I could. Okay, exactly. Um, so so um so she was always very supportive. Um, but I think, to be honest, I sort of I listened to the people. I did a play, and um, I was How in the ensemble. You? I was probably a freshman in high school, maybe yeah. eighth grade, something like that. And um and I listened to the people around me, and I I wanted to be better. I wanted to be like them. So I started mm. pushing myself and, you know, really trying to learn how to sing better, how to act, but you know, how to act better. I, I'm saying that in quotes. Even yeah, no, no, but, but I know exactly what you mean. You wanted to get better at whatever, yeah. whatever they were doing. You, you want you watched it and you wanted to be part of that and you, you cared enough about it to want to find out how to do it. in a Sure. Better. And I, I've always sort of wanted to rise to that next, how, that but next see, that's level, part you know. of, what this business is about. <clears throat> you know, uh, Tara Connor has just joined us. She's gonna be on the show next week, I think. Right, Tara? Yeah, I think we set up. She's an amazing singer, uh, a big, gigantic voice. So I'm looking forward to that. We're talking about singing now. So, um, see, a lot of people wanna do things, but they don't understand what that entails. Mm -hmm. And it's about the work. It's about, you see, okay, you're at point A, or you maybe you're before point A. Maybe you're just watching from the wings. Mm -hmm. and you say, I want to do that. Then there are the steps that you take to do it. So you were how old when, when this happened? Oh, Freshman? probably a sophomore in high school. Okay. Yeah. And Johnny, when did you figure out that you could sing? Or I was a junior in uh, high school. Okay. And uh, they were doing a, a winter concert, and they needed somebody to sing scenes from an Italian restaurant. Wow. And I love Billy Joel. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sure. And I just thought, okay, I, I, I think I could do that. And then they changed it to You May Be Right by Billy Joel. Okay. And then we did that, and that was it. And then we did Greece the next year, and I was Danny Zuko. I Sarah. was Rizzo in Greece. And from that moment, I can't believe as it. As soon as I came Were you out, in Greece? and I bet I've out. never done Greece, but I've always wanted to be that little. Yeah. What's that play on the radio? And I did that in '91. <laughs> Duty. Three years later, it would be Duty. Great. Yeah. All right. So when we do the be a forty-one year old. But listen, sure. <laughs> when we do the the nursing home version, yes, exactly. thirty years from yes. now, yes. we will be. That's it. Your duty, and we're casting. You can rest the guitar done. on the walker. And <laughs> that's play. it. I'm telling you. No, but when, when I was five years old, I was in a, a play called Sourdough Sally, and I was Sourdough Billy. And I'll never forget, I, I stood on the stage, and instead of standing facing the audience or facing Sally, I stood three quarters. And you knew? And the teacher see? was like, your mother gives you lessons? And I'm like, no. She's like, oh, how do you know how to stand like that? I was like, I don't know. So it Your must've... instincts were correct. I mean, I'm, right. trying, I'm not trying to... No, but you, know, you... Look, there was some sort of instinctual thing going on that I didn't know anything about it. <gasps> Marie Roldan. Who's that? I'm Marie Roldan. Is that oh, your friend? Another community theater. Oh my God! Look at this. She Speaking tours Greece, with John. she tours with um, um uh, Luke Christie. Oh, cool. She's part of the uh, the when she the high notes and lightning strikes. She wow. Sings yeah, she's great. She's wow. Great. Okay, so all these singers and yeah. Mandar has joined us. Mandar, I call him Mandar Chick Magnet. Mandar <laughs> is my right. Mandar is my friend. He is uh he is not in the arts, but he is a lover of the arts and he can dance like nobody's business. He nice. is Indian and he dances Bollywood dancing nice. like a wild person. I love it. And uh, every time I've seen Mandar, he comes into the clubs and hangs out and enjoys. But when I go to his Facebook page, he's always flanked my gorgeous girls. Oh. So I call him Mandar Chick Magnet. I'm telling you. Good so for you, Mandar. Yeah, good for you is <laughs> right. So he's joined us. So uh, no, but talking about instincts as a young person, you know, um, some it's just like any, like let's say take sports and somebody doesn't know much about it, but gets up there and the coach says, wow, the kid's a natural. 
Mm. He needs a little fine tuning, but the kid's a natural. Right. The same thing with singers and and actors. I think like you, you, sometimes you can you can learn things, but as a young kid, like I'm a teacher and I teach performing arts, and sometimes you'll just see something in a child. Sure. You can't believe you're like, oh my god, this kid yeah, really yeah, has it. Yeah. And then you know you you build upon that. And then there are other kids that you may have them and they are very shy or they're but they're the kid that listens and watches and learns. Yes. And then yes. the next year and the next year they come back and you're like, how did that little kid become this amazing teenager? So there's many different ways. That's why I asked you both the kind of kids that you were. Sure. Now, speaking of kids, you both have sons, right? That's right. Okay, so tell us about your son. Sure. Oh, how, uh, <laughs> how old is he? He's, first of all, adorable. Uh, thank and you. And looks just like you. <laughs> okay, so, because that's why I put you together. I love how you both love being dads. Yep, he's got certain features of my wife, but... Uh, yeah, but, he does. But, he's a mini-me. He yeah, looks, he is. He looks like me. Uh, Davey's six years old. He's in first grade. Um, he is a funny, happy little kid, smart. He's learning to read this year, and he's a whiz at math. Um, he he loves video games. He loves Mario. Um, Does he know that you are a performer? Oh, Does sure. He, okay. Oh, sure. So he spent – I've been doing Phantom now since he was about two years old. Oh, wow. And for about – I'll say a third of that time. He and my wife were on the road with me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. Um, so we've challenging. traveled the country together. Wow. That's great. He's been to 39 states. Are you <laughs> um, yeah. That's yeah. Fantastic. And he'll hit 40 this summer. Is um, your wife also a performer? She started as a performer. Uh, oh. When we first met, we were both performers. Uh, Is that and, how you met? Uh, uh, that is how we met. Yeah, wow. doing a show together, doing Titanic. That's so romantic. Yeah. Doing Titanic. Titanic. Yeah. That's so romantic. We drown together every <laughs> night. <laughs> we drown together. Listen, where can you go from there? Right. You drown. You, you go gotta up. get married. You gotta go up. You have to go up. It's, you gotta do the right thing after you drown together. You gotta get married. Oh my god, I love that. Yeah, that's great. yeah, yeah. That's so cool. So they traveled with you. Oh yeah. Wow. Yep. You know, by car, we, you know, we would. You know, the, the, most of the company would fly, but we'd drive to wherever oh, the next place was. That's and awesome. Yeah, oh my yeah. God, so we, I mean, we've seen the country together. Davies, Davies driven cross country twice now. Uh, really? So he's well and traveled. He's, only he's been on most of those stages. Like he'll run out. He has no trouble running out of a that's two thousand cool. seat house and singing really? on the stage. Yeah, he's. Does he sing? Does he like to sing he's too? He's got a great little singing voice. Yeah, he's yeah. He's wow. just a great. He's a great kid. I can't. Say this is fantastic. Him. I love this. And and Johnny, your son is older, right? My son he used to be six years old. And he used to be six years old. Nice. And, no, I'm kidding. If you're watching Jack, I'm joking. My son Jack is 13, and he, he is. Is uh, he as cool as you? He's cooler than me. Is and that true? Yes. How could that be? He's cooler than me. He's, you're he's, pretty cool, Johnny. Nah, he's cool, man. And he, Dion said it. Dion said, yo, man, your son's the coolest kid I ever met in my really? life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was great. Wow. And That's no, a my big son, deal. He, um, Oh, he, oh, let me interrupt you for you. See what Leo has done. I told you he would oh. do this. Leo has put D on the musical up. The, the thank you so much. Playbill put the announcement on yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's, he's gonna do. Room. I know he probably either already has done your show or he will do it. Sure. What's the tag for your show, by the way? Uh, their hashtag is Phantom US Tour. Okay, so uh, that's how, and that's how. And uh, the website is, I think, oh, fanoftheopera right. com. Okay, so we'll find. Maybe Leo's already done. Thank you, Leo. <laughs> I love to. I have to do it. You know. Way. You know what I love about my son. We have. Um, I love the, that. We have this thing called Pupil Path. Do you have Pupil? Path? No, I don't know what that is. So this is an app on your phone that if it existed when I was in high school, I would not be doing this interview right now mm -hmm. because it shows every test and every score and everything that happens in every class yeah. day oh by day. Yeah. Oh my god! So he's. You know, I don't know. So where you can from. follow wow. him, yeah. what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. We can I would see have been in trouble. Every test mark, we can see every grade he gets in every class, and he's doing phenomenal. He's he's really That's a smart amazing. kid, and he's a piano player too. Really? Yeah, he's wow. a. He's where did he get he's that? A pianist. Oh. Um, did you? Did you? So you? Got I him... play a little bit here and there, but he goes into his room, listens to YouTube, comes out, and goes, "Listen to this," and he plays it. And I'm like, "You wow. don't have the sheet music for that." He wow. was like, "I just heard it on YouTube." Like, oh what? my god. So yeah, he's he's really uh, That's really cool. We're very proud of him. Does he sing as well? Um he can carry a tune, but he he'd rather not sing. He's a he'd musician. Play the piano. Yeah, okay, yeah. and you how about your son? Does he sing? Does uh, he yeah, like yo, he, sing? yeah, he's got a great little voice. Yeah. Does he? For sure. Yep. 
and we're, you know, we've got him on the violin. Uh, you know, he's, he's starting. He's it, young. <laughs> listen, you know what's great about instruments and kids? Many things. Number one, it's math. It's it's math. That's right. Yeah. Music is math. People don't realize that. You know, one of my friends, Greg Schlothar, wrote a song last year called Math and Magic, and it's about musicians. Sure. And I just, it gives me chills every time I hear it. And I think he originally, he wrote it for Prince. After Prince died, he wrote that as an, an homage mm. to Prince, Math and Magic. And I think <clears throat> about that with musicians and kids. You know, it is. It's, it's math, but it's also this... Uh, like Craig said, it's this magic that happens. Yeah. yeah. And and for so that's beautiful. And instruments also, it sets you apart. If you're a kid that plays an instrument, you know how to, you know about being tenacious. You know about follow through. Mm -hmm. You know about practice. And it makes you a cool kid because people are always intrigued by instruments. True. Soon as you pull out your instrument, people are like, what's that? Do you play it? Can you play a song? It automatically puts you in the category of socializing more i think i oh, yeah. no, i always right. find you're that right, right? And like is your son really he must be cool because he's, he's cool he's very good in math too yes he's very good in science darcy you blakesley do you oh, know darcy no, i don't know darcy. she she was uh she's also a singer she was she worked with me downtown for many years now she's well she's from california so she's in la she does voiceover she's a singer oh, actress cool. amazing i love darcy yeah but math and, and math is and music is very very you know, Matt, right. closely uh, related. It's Absolutely. Amazing. It really, uh, and it blows me away every time he comes home with a test of 97. And I'm like, 97? I, I don't even think I ever <laughs> got <laughs> anywhere in the 90s. Because what happened was when I was growing up, I didn't know about, I mean, not that I, my mother or father didn't, you know, well, push Well, were your me. parents from another country? My mother was from Sicily. Right. My father was third generation uh, here already. Well, yeah, I mean, my parents were from another country, so the thing, and not that they were very, I mean, very intelligent people, but they were busy doing what they were doing, yeah. and yeah. we were the interpreters, really. Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't have time to check our, right, right. you know, they were working two jobs each. No, but this pupil path thing is amazing because it really is he, amazing. like, wants to impress us with making sure when we look at pupil path, oh, it's all blue. That's great. Or green. Not yellow, because yeah. yellow is a bit. They do oh. use something similar in our school. It's called Class Dojo, I think. Okay. And, uh, there's okay. something called and, uh, class He's only in too. first grade, so it's it's not as intense. But uh, Right. But, but uh, the way we see what's going on in the classroom, which is kind of cool. Oh, the way I love that. Yeah, the way my son studies is that he studies, retains it, and then applies it. That's I mean, that's the way he's really? supposed to do it, mm -hmm. but I didn't do it that way because I just <laughs> wasn't that type of person. Right. right. Type, Everybody's personality is different. But, um, yeah, he's amazing. It, it just blows me away. When I test him on what he studied the night before, it's like he memorized it. Well, wow. it sounds to me, though, you, the way you're describing your son with the music, how he goes and watches a YouTube thing, and then that he is able to visually see something yeah. and re, and re, record it. Mm -hmm. You know, some people have that kind of a... Me like Lynn Portis, who's a mutual friend of ours, who you would love. Okay. She's an amazing... She's my musical director, has been for years, but amazing. she musically directs a lot of people and does her own stuff as well. But and writes and, and, and scores films, and she's just incredible. But she's one of these people, we were talking about this earlier, that can listen, you know, she'll say, uh, what do you want to do? And you'll mention something. She's like, okay, I know that. But you just mentioned Beatles, she knows everyone. Yeah. You mentioned, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She can transpose it. She just, it, she it transposes, clicks, but she's also great at math. On the spot. Well, on the spot. That's right. a gift. That's yeah. A gift. And her son, her well, she has four kids now. They're all, one's a doctor, a lawyer, another one's an engineer. The littlest one is at Texas A&M, and he, when he was little, she used to bring him, we would be rehearsing, he was eight, and she would send him in, she'd say, here, Andrew, just give him something to do, and she'd write down some stuff, and I'd think, what did she do, hangman, or what did she write, did she, I don't know, I'm like, what did you do, what did you give him, she's like, oh, I gave him some algebra problems, he was eight, it was like, <laughs> algebra, but she's a mathematician, Sure. and he just was a kid that loved math, so that's how she kept him occupied. So every kid is different, you know, it's like, it's just really, it's really something. So now talking about your tours and your, now you're going to go out on tour, but you're not taking your not family on this, this time. No, no. They'll join so, me this summer. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll go to go to the, go to the West Coast uh, together. Cool. That would be um, nice. But, uh. Wait, you're going to be where in the West Coast? So I'll be playing, this summer I'll be playing L.A. Because Darcy, a lot of our Darcy. friends, Leo's family's from L.A. Cool. Where You'll be in L.A. Yeah, with we'll the tour? Yeah, I'll be playing the Pentages. Uh, uh, for 
May and some of June, I think. Great. And then, so, I mean, I don't okay. have the, the exact date in front matter. of me. We'll but, um, for it. but then we're doing Anaheim, and then in August, we're spending four weeks in Hawaii. What? Yeah. What part of Hawaii? Uh, Honolulu. Nice. Oh, my. Ooh. With the family. Yeah. And they'll be out. Oh, yeah. that's, oh, that's yeah, That'll cool, be a special man. summer. See? Yep. It's cuckoo. It's cuckoo and amazing. That's yep. cuckoo. That's I'm cuckoo. telling you. it's That's really something. But this leg, this next... Um, six or eight weeks or whatever. No, I'll be, I'll be on my own. And I'll come every time the tour moves, I'll come back home, uh, to be with them for a couple of days. Okay. But, great. um, but yeah, for the most part, you know, we're, and it's we're a bus. Separate. You guys travel on a bus? No, they, they, they usually fly. fly. I, I'll, cool. I'll Even probably better. have my car. Yeah. Even better. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wow. That's really exciting. Now, are you the kind of singer that vocalizes every day or are you the kind of guy that just goes out there and does it? I, should vocalize every yeah, day. Too, but I, don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I teach it. I, I tell my students to vocalize. I do sometimes, sometimes like on the way to something, if it's something where it's very demanding. Yeah. I will, on the way to the gig in the car, I'll vocalize. I know, I know what I need to do to yep. get myself ready for the show. So, um, so I'll make sure that that, that, that gets done. Yeah. yeah. yeah How about you, John? I usually do it before the show. Even when I did, even when I did a play, no, not a musical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did when I did uh, a room of my own with uh, Mario. M Mario. Cantone okay. So Mario and, uh, Cantone is also our mutual friend. Okay. Um, and he is. I told him you were going to be on the show. He sends his love. He's going to try to pop on. He's in LA tonight. But actually, Mario, who I went to high school with, we've been friends since we were, you know, teenagers. Um. Is going to be on the show in two weeks. Um, knock on wood, April 2nd, Mario's going to be on the show. Yay. Wow. So that's our mutual friend. Yeah, and he's so cool. So you guys did a play together. Yeah. What was the name of yeah. the play? A Room of My Own. Wow. And uh, Ralph Macho was in it as well. And uh, it was about an Italian-American family in the West Village in 1979. Wow. Uh, mother, father, son, daughter. The and crazy. Who, who did you play? And who I played you? the dad. Mm -hmm. And Mario was? And, uh, the, the crazy eccentric. Uh, homosexual uncle that lived upstairs. Oh, wow. wow. Great. And Ralph played, actually, the writer of The Wanderer and one of the producers wrote that play as well, and he, it was about his family. And Ralph played him as an adult. Oh, really? And then this young boy, Nico Bustamante, played him as a little boy, and Ralph and he were the only people that can talk to each other. It was a memory play. Oh, but the, the, the apartment was framed out like a frame. Oh, God, I and, wish I'd seen it. Um, the, girl, the woman playing my wife in The Wanderer. Yeah. Also played my wife in that. Her name wow. is Jolie Trebuzio, and she's amazing, oh, cool. too. So. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's, it's did great. that just happen that way? That you, oh, um, did you? We, I uh, mean, how cool that you well, get to do that again. Well, she, the, the funny thing is the first, very first time she played Tina in Tony and Tina's Wedding, I was her, un I understudy Tony that night. Wow. And that was the one and only time we ever played Tony and Tina. Wow. And then 15 years later, we played husband and wife in another play. Isn't that crazy? Room, my own play. And yeah. she found a black and white picture of us as Tony and Tina. And we put it on the wall in the apartment and made it our wedding picture. No way. No. Oh, that's great. No. That was cool, 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 cool. You talk yeah. about destiny. Yeah. That's really yeah. something. And we've been together working as this, it this, this, um, well, it's just chemistry. We call you it have the greaseball cabal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've been together working, and it's just amazing. Oh, here he, we were just oh, talking about oh. you, Mario. Mario's popped on. Hello, Mr. Kent. We were just talking about Room of, room of My Own, right? Yes, yes, yes. And yes. we're talking about the, uh, how cool, and you just popped on. Popped on. So uh, Mario's out in L.A., and he said he would try, and he, he did. So I'm sorry I missed that. I don't, you know, sometimes when you work nights, you can't go to things. It's like really uh, frustrating. Well, we, we, it's still in the, the works. It's still you in the works. You never know what can happen. Okay. You, you never know. know. But, uh, HBO but, has it. Netflix has it. So. All right. You never know. Cool. Okay, you cool never stuff. Know. So keep that. Uh, maybe we'll hashtag Sounds that. Great. Actually, you know what? We will we'll hashtag that to room of, room of one's own or room a, of mine? A room of my own. A room of my own. We'll yeah. hashtag that too. Cool. So, um, okay. So you... Now, what do you do to prepare for this tour that's coming up? What? Yeah. Uh, well, a lot of it, a lot of this is making sure that that my life at home is 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 wrapped up and taken care of where it needs to be, so that you know, make sure that you know my wife has what she needs to. to right. Um, logistics to be, of that. Yeah, it's all the logistics. Um, but for the most part, like I'm so I've been doing this now for so long that I'm so plug and play into it that I know exactly oh, what's going to happen. When I show up on Thursday, right. I know, you know, I'm going to find the dressing room and I'm going to go to the company meeting and I know that it's, you know, I haven't 
I haven't done some of the choreography in a couple of months, so I'm a little is worried it, about like, that. Is maybe, is but, most uh, of the same cast, or have you pl have you put in new people? Or? I, there are a few new people, but I think it's going to be okay. Nine, so 90 the rehearsals the are almost people. more for them, right? Really, yeah. To pop yeah, them yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're doing the show set Thursday night when you get there. I'm doing a show Thursday afternoon. Oh, wow. <laughs> awesome. Wait, so, so you great. get in Thursday wow. and you do a show? Do a show Thursday afternoon, another wow. one Thursday night. Wow. Yep. Okay. That's yep. amazing. Yep. Wow. Okay, so listen, now we have reached the part of our show. You've watched the show, so you know what's coming up. Uh, David, I, I don't think you've watched the show, but there's a and I cook for the, my guests as well. That's how I lure my, my guests in. That's how I get them up to the heights. So we have reached the part of our show <clears throat> called Go Ahead, Keep Eating. Now we have to do it together. <laughs> We've reached the part of the show called Go, Go ahead, ahead, Keep eating. eating. Thank you so much. All right, so what did I make tonight? First of all, I love. I always ask my guests, do you have any restrictions, allergies, preferences? Because I don't, you know, I want to make what people like and I want to make sure no one's allergic. And a lot of, you know, people have restrictions. These guys both literally answer the same way. Nope. And <laughs> I was like, yay, yeah. yay, yay. So what I did was I made like a big, this is just our display plate. I have a gigantic amount in there. So I made a pasta. These are called gemelli. They're like twisted, kind of like fusilli. But if you double them, Johnny's making that great face. He's like, mm. <laughs> and what, what did I make for a sauce? I made a tomato sauce with first I, uh, I grilled uh, sausage and uh, roasted red peppers sausage roasted red peppers and shallots mm. all together threw them in the sauce and let that like simmer for hours on end so this is a so and it's sweet because i threw a carrot in there and the roasted red peppers i found wow. this is trick makes things sweeter rather than just trying to get the red peppers to do the trick so we're having this and we have a ton of it in there oh my god stop what you're doing gina savino my cousin has joined us and when my gina savino comes on we clap gina savino everybody <laughs> Thank you. She is a hairdresser, and she is out at um, Joyce's Unisex Salon, 132 Ferry Street in Everett, Massachusetts. All right. She and her sister are hairdressers. They own a business there. Chocolatina Q Dessert. So, Gina, look what I made. I made gemelli, which is kind of like fusilli, doubled, with sausage, roasted red pepper, shallots, in a tomato sauce. It smells so good. There's a little bread there for us. Now, I, as I said, I have a ton. It's so good. What did I, I know. It smells delicious. And it's going to be good. What did I make for our delicious salad? I love salad. Anybody that knows me knows I love salad. So this is kale, spinach, and romaine chopped up. Oh, no, I'm sorry, uh, green leaf, not romaine. Ch uh, chopped up, and I have red peppers, red onion, radishes, sliced bosque pears, <laughs> gorgonzola cheese. Bears in my feet. I love so pears. Good. I love oh. pears. And I'm going to throw, I think what I'm going to use for a, a dressing is I have a nice fig and no pear. I have pear infused. Let's go with the pear. Yeah. Double the pear. Pear infused vinegar. The nice extra virgin olive oil. A pair of pears. A, a pear, pear of pears. Pear, yeah, if you will. Nice. So we'll do that now. Johnny walked here. Let me just tell you. I said he said, "Oh, I get out of work a little early. You know, is oh, there anything I can pick up for you, or you know, I'm going to kill a little time and I might walk up to you." I was like, "Walk up? Where, where are you going to be?" He's like, "Midtown. Midtown. I'm on. <laughs> I'm at the top of the world up here." Anyway, so I said, if you get tired, jump on a train. But he did walk most, most of the time. I was going to get some, like, really heavy dessert. And I thought, oh, shit, maybe this guy, oh, excuse my language. Maybe this guy <laughs> is on a diet or something. So I, I have fresh fruit. However, don't, don't be, I have this beautiful, these beautiful berries. Ooh, Do not be fooled, delicious. though. I have strawberry ice cream in the fridge and Rocky Road ice cream. Oh, yeah. So we'll have a ice cream with a little garnish of fruit there. Okay? But I didn't know if you were watching... The, you know, I so, was supposed to be watching <laughs> the carbs if my wife was watching. All right. What is your wife's name? Let's give her a shout out. Oh, my wife's name is Tabitha. Tabitha. She's very yes. beautiful, as is your wife. You both. Thank you. You, you have like haughty wives. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's what happens when you're a musician. You get hot wives. And I married a younger girl. You did? She's only 35. Nice, Johnny. <laughs> All right. If you're watching, say hello. If my mother's watching, say hello. Where? If anybody I'm watching besides Just her, say, hello. Be, say hello. Just say hello so I know you're watching. All right, so people are, they are loving the food. Cream, mm. You know, I do actually, uh, Leo, I actually have whipped cream and I have pecans. What I usually do, it sometimes if you want a low-carb, kind of low carby fruit kind of thing, dessert, berries, 
whipped cream. I put a little bit of Splenda and some mm. crushed some uh, pecans in there. Oh, and yeah. just, it's delicious. All right. So John Bell has joined us. Joe Gulla, my friend Joe Gulla, he's a playwright. Actually, Joe, you should watch both these guys because Joe is a great playwright. He has a lot of plays that have uh, all over the country being done, and he would love both of you. So this is David Foley Jr., and this is Johnny Tomorrow. So you guys will have to look up uh, Joe Gulla because he's, he's great. Cool. All right. So now, uh, growing up, let's talk a little food now let's mm -hmm. switch over to the food yeah. growing up what was your david what was your favorite thing? like if it was your birthday and and somebody would make your favorite meal what was it so now you're smiling because you have a favorite sure meal. well, I, well I don't know if it is i got well, it in my head have? from a very early age that chicken a la king was my favorite i love chicken a la king it's, it's good. good it's really it's, it's delicious <laughs> but it was like the, the dinner that I would ask my that, that my mom would just make at a really? certain point every year on my birthday because How cute. because when I was like four or three maybe I was like I want chicken a la king like, wow and does was, your son have certain things he loves my son eats like, about four things he'll eat chicken fingers yeah mm. he'll eat fish sticks yeah uh, pizza yeah, is a big one and graham crackers that's so it. That's uh, right. yeah graham, you that's know, that's why I always ask because as a kid you it. like what you like chicken a la king I love that right. Wow, and how about you, Johnny? What was well, like your favorite? Growing up, whatever my mother made is what you ate, and that's what you ate. See, that's the difference with Italians. Mm -hmm. But you yeah, better eat yeah, what mm -hmm, they give exactly. you. Exactly. I have a funny story that my yeah, please, my tell brother it. would only eat pizza and pizza, and then sometimes <laughs> pizza. <laughs> yeah. So one day, my mother made meatloaf and peas and broccoli and mashed potatoes and, Sounds delicious and bread and everything and soda. You know, we have a whole deep meal and my brother's like, I don't want to eat this. And my, my mom's like, you have to eat it. I mean, this is what you're eating. You're, I made you eat it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to eat it. I don't want to eat it. My mother got up, slammed the plate on the, de the table, went, she got the blender, put everything in the blender and said, now you're going to drink it. <laughs> and she put my brother in the bathroom and he had to drink it. No. Yes, it was wow. phenomenal. I loved it. Italian mothers are tough. Loved it. But now, my my go to birthday meal <laughs> is brajol. Mm. I love brajol, but I what? haven't had it in Wait. so long. What? 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 Wait. Wrapped in pig skin. What? Not beef. Mm. You take the pork skin and you wrap whatever's inside the brajol, and that's the skin. That's the outer part of the brajol. Holy mackerel! The vegans oh, are losing Ooh, their minds yeah. it's right now. They just jumped out the window. It's the delicious. Vegans. Oh my God, Vincenzo D'Amato has joined us. He's my Italian. Vincenzo D'Amato. He's one of the Gombatis. Yes. He's one of the Abruzzi, Abruzzi Gombatis. Hi, Vincenzo. How are you? We call him Jimmy, though. Keith Torgan has joined us. Hi, Keith Torgan. He's going to be on the show soon. He's a great uh, writer. He's, he's written many children's musicals and does so many great things. And his wife's a musician. We're talking about musicians. Um, what I want to scroll back because I think somebody said something and we missed it. Sometimes it's hard. But we'll go back and... Um, Oh, Len Shabar has also joined us. A lot of new people have joined us. Okay, so when's your birthday, Dave? You don't have to give us the year. Just I want to know what your no, sign I is. I can tell the year too. Uh, but but uh, February twenty seventh. So don't tell me you're a Pisces. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So Pisces are nice. They're reliable and they're they they don't make too many waves. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. We're just a Pisces quiet fish. Right? Yes, exactly. Pisces don't is like waves. oh yeah they, okay. You can put a Pisces anywhere, pretty much. Sometimes some of them get a little mopey, but you do not seem not like thing. the mopey no. type. I, I have met a few mopey, mopey Pisces, Pisces in my day, but you're not one of the mopey Pisces. Okay. And you, uh, like, what are you, a Gemini? July 11th. Wow. Oh, wait. Don't tell me cancer. Right in the middle. I have two friends that I absolutely adore that have the same exact birthday as you. My friend Emily McNamara. Oh, and my Emily friend, Mac. You know Emily Mac? We've known each other since we were... She's the best. She's doing a new show. 20, 22, something oh like that. Yep. Emily McNamara, awesome. who now has a little girl who's beautiful. You know, I officiated their wedding. No. Emily and her husband, yeah. Oh, wow. Emily Mac, the same birthday, and John Bronston. Do you know John Bronston? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yep. Amazing piano player and uh, musical director and so many composer. Those are my two 7-Eleven uh, friends, oh, wow. and now I have three 7-Eleven friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, Johnny, your uh, birthday? Oh, no, that's you. Yeah, yeah. And so you're a Pisces. All right, so we a Pisces, that's good. Pisces and a Cancer tonight, and I'm a Gemini. I'm a little bit on the wacky side. So this is nice, very calm. We're going to have a nice dinner afterwards. Lovely. All right, so um, we got about 10 minutes left to our show. So what are... What would you tell people that are 
watching that are that are thinking about maybe doing this because you know the, the whole mission of my show of course i love to show off my friends because i have these amazing friends and i have this great <clears throat> life in new york where i i know all these people and like i know my brother-in-law sometimes i'll be watching tv with them and i'll say oh that's so and so like law and order or, sure. or i'll see something come up for a musical oh that's my friends in that musical he'll say no no what do you know everybody and i kind of know a lot of people mm, yeah when you're in New York for a while and you're in the arts, you do know a lot of people. So, um, but it's not an easy business to be in. And people really underestimate uh, uh, how hard it is to stay in it. So I like to show off creative people. And, and I always say that the reality of living, thriving, and surviving as a mm -hmm. creative person. So what would you say, David, is for you uh, the best part of it and the most challenging part? So starting with the most challenging okay. is probably, and I think a lot of people would agree with this, the, the inconsistency. It's that it's not, you, you know, it's, you're not always, you know, making the same, the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. It's not always the same work circumstances. Um, you know, sometimes you're out doing a show making, you know, a great living and other times you're doing a, a piece that, you know, that might mean a lot to you or that, right. or that might be great for exposure, but you know, isn't really supporting the family necessarily, right, you know, right, and um, right. so you're finding other ways to, to, to make up for that, that part of, of, um, you know, of the, of the dynamic. And we talked earlier about, a about it being a mosaic, you know, mm -hmm. and about trying to, to fit all the different, you know, pieces in, and then, you know, you, you don't know what you're doing for a minute and then you're doing switching gears and doing something completely new. And then you take a step back and you realize that all those little pieces that you've been working with make what, you know, yeah. your, your body. Yeah. That's what my friend what Susie, Susie Camp always says mm -hmm. is that that's what, you know, life is like a mosaic. And I thought about that and it's like really like the way that we, I was saying our body of work, it's these little broken pieces, you know, a show here, a, a piano bar shift here, you know, commercial there. And then all of a sudden, you know, and then you're working on something. And then by the end of it, that's your body of work. Mm -hmm. And it's quite beautiful. You know, if you appreciate you it for what it is, I, you hope, mm -hmm. right? If you stay on track and if you keep your heart mm -hmm. and your head open, and okay, so that's the hardest part. What, sure. what do you like the best about it, of course? The best is that is that when this job is good, it's it's really good. Like I have loved getting to show Davy like every train museum and you know children's museum in the country, and yeah. you know getting him to see you know America, you know. Um, his teacher in kindergarten um, uh, showed a picture of uh, of, of uh, Mount St. Helens, and he just spoke right up. And he was like, oh, I know that. That's a volcano. It blew up in 1980. You know? <laughs> like, yes. He'd been there. You know? And, and, yes. that's, that's it. and the, the that's teacher really was like, cool. how does he know this? You wow. Know? See, that's really cool. So, that's, it, again, it goes back to, to the fatherhood thing. Wow, wonderful. Okay, Johnny, what is – same thing. What is the, the – the, the, you like the best about this business, and what do you – find most challenging well, i have to agree with david um the the inconsistency of mm -hmm. the amazing stuff the money the pay whatever you're sometimes you're doing something that pays you a, a lot of money and you're like right. wow right and then right. something comes along and you're like oh, what a great juicy part i want to do this part right but what how much right. does it pay oh okay and then you do it but you know though but but everything you do becomes a part of you okay right. and, and it goes inside and, and becomes your inner work he's like i was talking to somebody the other day about paying your dues and i'm like i don't even know what that means but then i stopped. well if you don't know what it means you've already paid them. then i stopped and i'm like wait a minute that's I, what i made mm -hmm. them already i've been paying them for the last 21 yeah, years right, that's right i say right. i've been juggling for the right. past 21 years juggling my family life a regular job whether it be nine to five or part-time gig i mean right now mm -hmm. i'm working at the new fbo schwartz and i'm a I toy saw soldier you. i mean <sighs> okay yeah. this is very important stop what you're doing everybody you see what he said it goes back to humility if you truly are an artist and this is for the like a lot of the younger kids or people that have been you know sometimes people get where they're like it's something is beneath them if you truly are an artist, you have to keep doing what you do. And sometimes that means that you, okay, you're going to take a job that you normally would not have done it, but you're going to be the greatest at it. Now, what I yeah. love about you is I look at your Facebook wall and you have, you have a body of work that you can be very proud of. 
And there you, what do you have on your Facebook page? You have your choice soldier mm -hmm. because you put just as much into that yeah. Oh, yeah. as you do in that role that you're gonna or, that you originate and the, and fatherhood and everything. If you're gonna put your and this is the way I live my life and I try to teach this to some of the younger people I know. Put your signature on everything you do, and if you're gonna put your signature on everything you do, you're gonna be good at what you do, and you're gonna care about it, mm -hmm. because I find that people don't seem to care about what they do anymore. No, it's not. very discouraging. And you guys are are two guys that really do care about what you do. But so what if you're the toy soldier at FAO Shorts? Right? I love it. How wonderful! I love it. I and love you it. get to meet people, and you make kids happy, and you know it's wonderful. You know, the, one of the things I I say, worked at FAO Shorts. Like 20 years yeah, ago, I used yeah. to do children's parties. I was uh, Arthur the Aardvark, uh, Patrick the Dog, Patrick the Puppy. Yes. Yeah, Clifford, back. Clifford the Dog. Oh, cool. Why not? And I was in Tony and Tina's at the same time. And I was teaching 20 hours a week. Yeah. Why not? I'm a huge believer in everybody has to work. Yes, mm -hmm. me too. So oh, everybody has to work. You can, if, you can, if you don't have to work, you have a silver spoon in your mouth and you have a trust fund or whatever. But even if you do that, for the love of God, get off your couch and go and do something. Right, you right. need purpose. Everybody needs purpose. Right. And every job I've had in my life, except for June of 17 to June of 18, we won't talk about that. <laughs> don't but every job don't I, say it. Every job, I have, two, two, two. every job I had in my life, I wanted that job. And right. I went for it. And I loved it. And I do it. To the upteen degree, right. because my father told me that he said, "Yeah, you, whatever job you get, do it to the best of your ability, and make sure you're nice to everybody." My no. cousin Gina said, "Amen to that." She is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. That's how my family. I mean, God, my my whole family. Her her uh, grandpa and my grandpa were brothers, and uh, Marisa knows. I mean, Dave, I want to hear what you have to say, it, and maybe your family's the same way. Man, they came over here and they worked, oh, and they yeah. never stopped yeah. working, and even in retirement, they were all doing. A million things. So what we go ahead. What no, was I, mean, I mean, I've that? been working since I was fourteen. My yeah. my parents made sure that I had a job as soon as I was allowed to work. Um, and for the last twenty years, whenever I haven't been doing a show, I've been behind a bar. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I know. And I don't think I'd be as good an actor if I hadn't put in that work. Y yeah. You know. Um, well, life experience sure. number one in mm -hmm. acting. I think life experience is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, number two. Bartending is one of my favorite things. I've been doing it for 30 mm -hmm. years, more, oh my God, since 83. And it, bar, my bartending experience has taught me more about people. Oh, sure, yep. absolutely. And, inter yes. and same thing with like uh, doing characters and whatever you're interacting, uh, uh, Ubering, whatever you do mm -hmm. that you're gonna mm -hmm. deal with people, it's gonna teach you so much that you will use. Absolutely. And the I exchanges, the give and take, the saying yes to an an improv. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. I can't yeah. tell you how many times I've got sides for uh, you know a show or, or something where I've taken a step back and said, I know this guy. Who is right. he? And I've gone through my little Rolodex in my head of my regulars from over the yeah. years exactly. and I find him and you know and he's there. And mm -hmm. you know, isn't that amazing? It's yeah, cool. and you know what's funny because I when I when I work on the acting with my students uh, you know, we do that. We talk about the who, what, where, when, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's sometimes they're like, "What does that mean?" And I, and I say to them, because I do do this in auditions. When I audition, I always pick someone I'm talking to, and lots of times it's someone at a bar. Sure, it's one of my customers, and I know that the way I would talk to them and the reaction I would have with them, whether it's an angry one, whether it's one about, "Hey, wake up, man! Come on, you got to go mm -hmm. home," whatever it is, or. It, and, and and people in your life, even if you meet them for ten minutes, exchanges are very valuable sure. as actors, and you don't forget those things. And same thing with my cousins. There are a lot of hairdressers. My sister's a hairdresser. My dad. You get, you know, you're exchanging energy with your clients and your people. That you you, you know you you never can. No one can take that away from you. Sure. You know, and then you bring that into your acting. Okay, so we have about two minutes left to our show. I think, believe it or not. Jimmy's going to pop on at any minute. What would you say to a, a younger person coming up that's moving to New York or maybe somewhere else that is thinking about going into our business? Perseverance is the key. And no matter what you do, like my mother used to tell me, well, I don't care if you shovel crap behind the horse <laughs> right. or you're on a stage, mm -hmm. as long as you're happy and as long as you do it to the best of your ability, that's it. That's all that matters. That, That's all that matters. It's true. That, perseverance, perseverance, perseverance. Mm -hmm. That's what Robert De Niro said. 
Mm. That that was the most important thing. Um, and Dave, what would you say to that person listening? I guess I'd say just jump in and do it. You you will never be as prepared, as educated, as you know, taught as as you'd like to be. But that doesn't mean there isn't work that you can and should be doing right away. Get in there, learn from the people around you, listen to the other people, see what they're doing, be a sponge, and, and just work. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you born in New York as well? No, born in Massachusetts. Like, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. right. Oh, yeah. my God, we had this conversation. Mm -hmm. So he's Worcester. a Massachusetts guy. <laughs> right, Worcester. Come on. How much more Massachusetts can you get? And, Johnny, you're a Brooklyn guy, Brooklyn. right? Yeah. Born and raised. Yeah, absolutely. And and the, the thing that I would say is don't um, – also don't listen to the wrong people. I would give you that advice. Mm -hmm. There are the right people and wrong people. How do you know if the wrong pe who the wrong people are? They're jealous. If you truly are a person in this business that loves what you do, you are never looking at someone else and wanting what they have. Right. You are inspired right. by. Like I listen to you guys and I go, oh, you know, that would be fun to work on a new project again. What, what you know, but oh, I, oh. how much time do we have, Jimmy? A minute. Thank you, Jimmy. So don't, uh, don't compare your life to other people. Be inspired by them or pull them up. We help each other out. It's an exchange of energy. I have David Foley Jr. here tonight. I have Johnny tomorrow. David is going to be in the tour of Phantom. Mm -hmm. So be looking for that. We'll post all that stuff. Johnny is going to be doing um, The Wanderer, the musical. We hope. Yeah. No, it's it's 82%, happen. 87%. It's well, happening. 92%. And if not, he's going to be doing other things. So be looking for it. We love and appreciate you. Please come back. We're here every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. If you want to listen live, armdigitalmedia.com, armradioglobal.com. Watch us on Facebook on my page. And in about 12 hours, it goes into podcasts on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio. We love and appreciate you. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.